that collective soul was fantastic. It was in tune, it was great. Yeah, yeah. How did you hear those words? <laughs> we were like we were talking about it before we went on, we thought, well, like uh, Ontario, we could do a tragically hip song and then you know, I just Yeah, it was like in the end you kinda of go, eh, you gotta pick something that's more sing along than that kind of <laughs> Okay, so uh the, the year was 1984, 85, somewhere around there. And um, a, a tradition had begun in Triumph. Like, first album, like, we didn't have enough songs. And the record company had said, you know, no, we want an album right away, go on. And, and, and so Mike Levine had said, Rick, have you got, like, like a, like a, a Finkel-style guitar piece or something that we could do? And I said, yeah, you know, we've got that song, Blinding Light Show. And I said, you know, I've got a song in E minor where I can put a little guitar piece in the middle of that. And uh, so that started the thing where it was like every album, we never had enough material. And Mike would always come to me and say, Ricky, have you got another guitar piece? You know? <laughs> go, yeah, sure, yeah, I don't mind that. So, but then of course, I sort of used up my songbook by the time the you know, band started in uh, 75. So, by, you know, 1984, I used up all my shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had to write, you know, like you had to come up with brand new fresh ideas and, and of course the guitar pieces, they're hard to play, right? But we had an engineer that worked at Metalworks and he had worked with a Glenn Gould in the studio. And Glenn Gould would record these things and then have all of these long pieces of, of uh, you know, quarter inch or, or even half inch tape that t taped up onto the walls and numbered, and then he would get the engineer to edit his pieces together. And I went, Huey, fuck, this is awesome. You know, I can like play three or four bars, but fuck up, and then we can cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Put the next eight bars, and then uh, fuck it up, and then cut it, and, and eventually we can just glue it all together, and then once it's done, then I can learn it. <laughs> I have to play alive. So that was how this guitar piece started in life. And you know, I mean, some people would think of it as cheating, but I, I think part of the thing about technology is that it allows you to sort of write over your head. You can write stuff that you can't play yet. You know, like I haven't learned how to play it, but I, I know how it goes. And I, I, my hands haven't learned it yet. So this was a big thing for me, and that started with uh, this piece that I'm going to play for you now, Midsummer Day Dreaming. Just Really quickly too, uh, we used to do this in the middle of sets, and, you know, when we went on tour, and, uh, and for you young folks, this was in the days where you were allowed to smoke indoors, and uh, people would bring noxious substances <laughs> to the gigs, and so we'd get to the middle of the set, and you know, Mike and Gil would go off to have a beer and take a leak, whatever they were going to do, and I would you know, get, come and do my self-indulgent moment. You know, and I'm doing my classical guitar bit, and um, everybody would fire up the giant dubs that they <laughs> Because they go, oh, well, you know, this is the low point of the show. It's just going to get bigger and bigger from here, and then in the end, they're going to blow up the world and shoot off the lasers. It's going to be amazing. So, uh, you know, I'm up there, and I'm playing my little guitar piece, and the place is filling with secondhand smoke, and I'm going, oh, man, I'm getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is called Midsummer Day. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 